Hey everybody, so this is how to fit any note inside of a chord in any key. I mentioned this concept briefly in the Q&A video, but I wanted to actually give a demonstration of it so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, what's important to note here is that this doesn't mean any note in any chord. I'm saying it's any note in a chord in any key. And that's important because sometimes the context of a chord or the quality of a chord will change the eligibility of any particular note depending on how you're using it. So it's, it's not quite as simple as any note works for any chord because that's not always true. The reason that this concept is super useful is because when I'm transcribing the, the, the notes of somebody's speech, I need to figure out how to use those notes to make actual music out of, to make something harmonically that makes sense, that can kind of like take you from one place to another. Otherwise, it just sounds like a bunch of gibberish. That, that would be super boring. It wouldn't make any sense because you'd just be jumping all over the place with no... It just wouldn't feel like anything you might actually hear. So instead, what I do is I use this concept to allow me to apply the notes that I'm transcribing from speech in a manner that sounds actually useful. And because of this, it actually doesn't even matter what the notes are that somebody speaks because I'll just find a way to plug them in somewhere that makes sense for what I'm doing. All right, so here's how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna use C and I'm going to apply it to a chord and we're just gonna go right up chromatically. Right, so we're just gonna take that and use it for some chord in all of those keys. So for C, I mean, it's obvious, it's just, it's the root. You know, so you, you can play that as simply as that. You could use it in, in really any way you want. I mean, that's a major context. Here's a more developed major context, something like. Use a minor. Minor seven, or like minor major seven. So it's the root, very simple. D flat, D flat, it's the major seventh. So we can use that in a couple different ways. Probably the most obvious of those is. D flat major seven. Add all kinds of upper extensions, whatever you want. It can also be used in the minor context because anything is based on like the melodic minor scale in general, like a minor major seven chord. Works there too. D, moving right along. It's the dominant seventh or the minor seventh of D. So you can use it in a major context. There it is, more developed. That also works for minor. All kinds of uses there. Uh, e flat, it's the major sixth of E flat, so we can use that in a major context. Like a E flat major seven, sort of six nine sound. Use minor. Uh, dominant too, sure, why not? All kinds of different uses there. E, this is the first one that gets a little weird uh, because it is the flat six or the flat 13 of E. So therefore, kind of gets into some interesting sounds. Now that by itself sounds strange, but if you hear it in context, it makes a lot more sense. You could do it something like... Uh, Like that maybe so it's a weird sounding you know uh, interval there but uh, in context it can be used to get you from point A to point B and that's really all we need it for F really simple it's the fifth so that's pretty much universal major uh, minor dominant Uh, in G flat or F sharp, however you're thinking of it, depending on the context, it's the, the flat five or the sharp four or the sharp 11. Again, it all depends on context. In a sharp 11 sound, it would be something like this. Beautiful sound, dominant. Works there too. Uh, uh, let's see, minor. is half diminished. So, you know, another weird sounding chord. But in context, moving from point A to point B. Moving on to G, it's the fourth in G. Now this actually changes things a little bit because you use it. It's kind of sort of out of place um in major certainly 
it's a little less out of place in minor. But what this can actually do is function as like a suspended sound. Which is, uh, you know, suspended fourth sound leading you somewhere else. So the simplest form of that would be like. Or, or like. Right, but a more involved sound would be maybe like a G uh, sus 13. Which is a really beautiful chord. That's one of my favorite chords. In context, you might hear that in a situation, maybe something, something like this. You know, like a big two, five, one sort of sound with a bunch of color tones. Moving on to A flat. It's the major third of A flat. Really simple, so. Um, dominant, you could use it. This is where things can get interesting, because like... Minor, there's not really like a, there's not really a simple context in which the major third over a minor chord could, could really smoothly work. Uh, you can get into some really crazy stuff, maybe like, like just some serious crazy upper extension stuff, you know, and you can, if you separate it enough from that, from that minor third, it, it, it can be, it can be used interestingly. But in a simple context though, making the major third work in a minor chord is not super easy. But one place it will work in a minor chord is A minor, because it's the minor third. Now this goes the other way much easier than trying to use a major third in a minor chord. Using a minor third in a major chord is much simpler because now we can talk about like the sharp nine sound, right? Which is another weird sounding chord, but again, in context. It's, it's just like it's moving you from point A to point B. So is the... So it works really well as like, uh, as, as the sharp nine. Let's move on to B flat. It's the major ninth of B flat. That's like a major, uh, major seven sound or a dominant sound. Minor works too. And last but not least, that brings us to B. And B is another weird one, just like E. Um, it's the flat nine of B. So that's the most obvious context is like a B7 flat nine sound. And again, you can attach any upper extensions that you want. Uh, how would I do that? So this is like a... What is this? Uh, B7 sharp 9 flat 13 flat 9 B7 flat 9 what the hell B7 flat B7 flat 9 sharp 9 flat 13 yeah okay well I, you know it works for something it would certainly work so yeah there you have it that's all 12 keys taking a c and making it work in some way shape or form and in fact in a lot of ways shapes and forms of all kinds of different chords because it's really really flexible and so that is one of the biggest components to how i make the dub videos because i'm able to essentially take no matter what anybody's saying no matter what notes are coming out of their mouths doesn't even matter because i can just make them work in some sort of context within what I'm actually trying to do. Thanks to all you fellow music theory nerds out there who found this video interesting. I appreciate you checking it out. If you haven't subscribed and you'd like to, please do. I'd appreciate that as well. And uh, yeah, guys, that's, um, I guess that's sort of part one of what maybe could be a more extended series on how to make these videos. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about any of this stuff or if you wanna know more or if you have uh, you know other questions about other things. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.